Ashray, and I'm back with another video. Like, I've been back and forth about whether or not I wanted to review this, um, this reality show, but I decided to go ahead and review it. So, this is, um, Life After Lockup. It comes on WeTV, just like, um, Growing Up Hip Hop, Growing Up Hip Hop comes on WeTV. It was a show called Love After Lockup, and then, like, now it's Life After Lockup. I think they still have Love After Lockup, but those, that, that, it, um, has new people on it, and then Life After Lockup follows the older people, um, that were on Love After Lockup. So, basically, what, what this is, is it follows the relationships of people who were in prison, uh, yeah, it, it of people who were in prison that are in relationships with people that are out of prison or who are about to get out of out of prison so basically it's a person like it's a convict or felon and another person that has not been in jail before well they well they're not whatever a regular citizen <laughs> and a convicted felon okay so I'm going to try something different here. I'm going to, like, put in pictures of the people or try to put in pictures of the people, you know, around or whatever. And so that we can kind of follow, like, who's who or whatever. Um, So basically, like, there's a lot of couples. But in this episode, there were only four couples that um the episode featured. So the first couple is Angela and Tony. Angela is a little bit older than Tony. I think she's 47. And he's Well, that's a lot. I think she's 47, if I'm not mistaken, and he's 34. So, he's, she's, like, she's 13 years older than him. Um, so, the episode starts with Angela, and I had actually already seen this, um, in the, the, the super trailer where Angela is burning all of Tony's stuff. So, basically, this is what happened. Tony just got out of jail, and Tony is working at a hotel. So, Angela tried to go through, she got mad because Tony got up, and he didn't sleep in the bed with her, he slept in the living room so she got up and got his phone but she couldn't get in his phone because his phone was locked so she basically um took his phone took the sim card out of his phone and put the sim card in her phone and was able to read all of his messages first of all that's too much work okay if you don't trust somebody <coughs> excuse me if you got to do all that you don't need to be with them. Like, that's too much. But basically, she found messages that he's basically, bas like, he's exchanging sexual favors to women for them to be able to use his hotel rooms for their business. So, she's figuring either their business is prostitution or their business is drugs. But whatever it is, he's having sex with these women um, in exchange for them using the hotel rooms where he works. And the bad part about this is like, and we as humans, not all humans, but a lot of us, we tend to like let things simmer. And I'm guilty of this as well. And instead of her talking to him about the situation, she just basically, she found out that night. And the next morning she lets him go, go to work and she doesn't even say anything until he comes home from work. And I'm just like, no, that's the wrong thing to do. Because now you're sitting there all day thinking about it. And... You sitting there all day thinking about this and you letting it fester more and more. So now we have Michael and Megan. That this is a this is a tri love triangle between Michael, Megan, and Sarah. Michael is married to make to Sarah. He's married to Sarah. But while he was in prison, he was talking to Megan. So he basically was playing both of them. And last season, Megan and Sarah kind of found out about each other and last when it ended when it ended michael had broke it off with sarah but he also kind of broke it off with with megan too in a way because he basically told her that the only reason he married her was so that he could see his kids which i think is just like so messed up but anyways so Last, Meg, Michael was like, he didn't want to mess with Megan no more. But all of a sudden, he's at her doorstep. And I'm like, you must need them loving, lock, them life at the lockup checks or something. Because he, he showed up to her door. He said he apologizes um, for everything that he put her through. And But my thing is, how you just going to pop up to somebody's house like that? No, you ain't give me no notice or nothing. You just pop up to my house and don't tell me that you come. Nah, bro, don't do that. And then the thing that got me, you trying to go win this girl back, right? But 
date while you on the way to see her another female that's not Megan and not Sarah, your wife, or now the person that you your wife that you're separated from, but legally she's still your wife. Neither one of them. This is a whole nother female. So, bro, what you doing, Michael? Why, Michael? Why are you still trying to bother Megan? Leave Megan alone. Megan trying to get herself together. Megan trying to move on. Like, why? And Megan, don't even get me started. Megan is so, to me, Megan is so naive. I just want to, she's just one of those people that you just want to reach through the screen and shake them and be like, girl, wake the hell up. That's Megan. Okay? <laughs> so, um... You know, they, they're they talking, and she's not going to let him in the house, and I don't blame her. He's like, oh, I can't come in your house. She's like, no, I don't want my dad to see you. And last season, dad was kind of like, he was ready to, you know, get at Michael. So I don't blame Megan. She's like, no, I don't want my dad, dad to see you. Like, She's listening to Michael, but she's not really buying what Michael's um saying. And I'm like, she shouldn't because technically... He's still married, and then he tells her that she's getting the that he's getting a divorce, but she doesn't really trust that. I'm sorry, I keep moving. She doesn't really trust that Michael is getting a divorce, but we'll see. I don't trust Michael. I don't trust Michael. So, <laughs> um, meanwhile, Sarah is back at home and in her hometown with with her and Michael's two kids, and you know she stated that they are separated. So now that it's coming from Sarah, I'm more inclined to believe it than it coming from Michael because Michael's just a big liar, and we've seen that through the season. Um, so basically, you know, his daughter tried to call him, and he didn't answer. And so Sarah goes on to pretend to be Michael. She asked her daughter, did she want to pretend? And she said yes. And so Sarah goes on to pretend to be Michael. And her daughter, their daughter basically expresses how she feels, that she misses him, that she wished he would come around. And, and I feel bad for that daughter, but I don't feel bad for Sarah because she kind of knew the type of person that Michael was. And she knew that Michael was cheating on her and she got pregnant again. So, it's kind of hard to feel sorry for her. Like, I just... Sorry, Sarah. Like, I don't know what to say about that. Because if you know how a person is and you still continue to deal with them, at some point you got to kind of take responsibility, you know. At some point you have to say, okay, you, this is my fault. But eventually she did leave him but at the same time you now you have two innocent kids in the middle of this whole situation just crazy marcelino marcelino and Brittany, um they're getting a sonogram for their baby and so basically Brittany reveals that she has five kids i thought she only had three but with this baby she has five she says she had two as a teenager that she had to give up for her adoption so that makes it now that she has three she has five children three that she's gonna have custody of and um one of them is not marcelino's and two of them are marcelino's the baby that she just recent just she just had i think the baby maybe i think she's at 15 months oh and then she's pregnant again um so they're at the place getting a sonogram and they're trying to figure out how she got pregnant because she i'm guessing she was on the iud iud because they said that it's supposed to last for 10 months i mean not 10 months it's supposed to last for 10 years and apparently like the birth control just didn't it failed but not all that they, they they was like oh it's supposed to be 99.9999 yeah but there's still that point one percent so you still got to be careful just because you don't want to have sex with rubbers sometimes you got to even if you are married because if you're really trying to prevent a pregnancy you got to like prevent it any way that you can because like you just found out birth control is not 100 percent, and she's just saying how their life is going to become more complicated because they're going to have uh, have to have another they're going to have another baby that they have to support and she said even though that this baby wasn't planned it is wanted um Andrea and Lamar. Uh, Andrea, I just... Now, she's a new one. Like, I stopped watching this show, but I decided to start back watching it just so I can review it. She's a new person to me on the show because I just started back watching. Um, And 
I just think I, this whole situation is just, to me, mind-blowing. So, basically, she goes to a sip and see. What is like a baby shower, but not really a baby shower. Like, the baby is already born, and you just go there, and you sip drinks and tea, and you see the baby. I don't know who would, who would want all these people around their brand new baby, but, you know, whatever. Um, and she's telling them how she feels dumb as hell for thinking that Lamar, you know, would, would, would change when he got, or things would be a certain way when he got out of jail. And that's what these dudes do. They, like, they give you this prison talk. They make it sound all sweet. Then when they get out, it's a whole different story. Like, and nobody, like, nobody got time for that. Like, I, I admit when I was young, I was, I was that, I was dumb. When, and with that dumb dumbness, believing people, you know, oh, when when I got when I get out of jail, you know, we gonna do this, we gonna do that. Da, da, da. But she's older, so I'm trying to figure out. But I guess it doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter how much age and maturity. Maturity doesn't come with age. So, so I I don't know. So you know they're married, but they don't live together. She lives in Utah. He lives in Los Angeles. She says she doesn't want to live in Los Angeles because it's dangerous. He wants to live in Los Angeles because that's where all his friends and family are. But she's saying that that's how he gets in trouble too. So it's just it's just weird. I don't understand how they're married and they're living separate separately. She reveals that they they had a seven year relationship and. That he was in prison for seven years and that her five-year-old daughter is his daughter. So everybody's trying to figure out how is her five-year-old, his five-year-old, if they were in, if he was in prison for seven years. It doesn't add up. But they was like, oh, her <laughs> friends were like, oh, conjugal visits. And she's like, no, we weren't married. So... Then they were like, well, girl, tell us how the hell you got pregnant if y'all weren't married and I weren't married and you weren't allowed to have conjugal visits. So how the hell you got pregnant? This fool going to say they had that she played for closet time. You did what? So you basically was having sex with this dude in a prison in a closet and that's how your child was conceived so now you got a closet baby like really like how embarrassing for this little girl to know that that is how she was conceived in a prison closet like do people think about the things that they do like seriously i i i mine blown and her friend is so shady about the whole situation. It's just so funny. Like, her, I, and her friend was like, I, I ain't trying to have sex in no closet, but to each his own. And I'm like, bro, it's, it was just too much. Okay, so moving on. Lacey and Shane. This is another love triangle. It is Lacey. <laughs> I don't know what. Lacey, Shane, and John. Apparently, Lacey was talking to both Shane and John. When she was in prison. Then when they, when Shane, I mean not when she was in prison, when Shane and John were in prison. And so Shane, I guess they got out around the same time. I don't know. I didn't watch last season. Whatever. And she made a decision between John and Shane. And Shane proposed to her. So she decided to be with Shane. So Lacey is trying to have a surgery to have her tubal ligation reversed because she wants to have a baby with Shane. While they're in the doctor's office, Shane is asking all these dumb types of questions, okay? And, well, let me back up. The doctor asked them how often do they have sex. And she, he was like, oh, like five to ten times a day. And the doctor was like, what? Like, how do you find time to work? And he was like, oh, I work in the bedroom. Like, that ain't no job. Like, you, okay, just because you... You you having sex with her, you sexing her down five to ten times a day. That's not a job, bro. Like really get a job. And so she was so basically it then the the doctor is asking is telling them about the options that they have. And I'm just like, how are they even trying to have a baby and he's not employed? How does that work? 
So she is she already complaining about taking care of everything. So now you for to add a baby to the mix? No, they they that's not how things work. It's not. Um. So they like, and he can't get a job because he's a felon. You know, and the doctor was explaining to them they can do IVF. So she doesn't have to untie her tubes. And I was like, huh? I mean, I guess you could because. With IVF, the baby doesn't the the egg doesn't have to travel down the tube because it's already fertilized with the sperm, and all she has to do is just put it in the uterus, because that's what happens. The tube comes down. I mean, the egg comes down the tube and it meets the sperm, and then it like six to twelve days later it implants in the uterus. So I guess yeah it makes sense. Like if you really think about if you know about these things like and the only reason I know about all of this is because I've been going through the IUIs and everything and thinking about going into IVF. Um if you follow me and my journey and everything you know this already. Um but anyways and I just don't see he's so young. He went to jail at seventeen and he just got out and he's twenty two. I just think he's so inexperienced and he's asking dumb questions about the baby and the doctor said that she thinks he's too young and I think he's too young too. I don't think at twenty two, fresh out of prison, he should be worrying about get having a baby, especially when he doesn't have a job. I think he his focus should be trying to get his life together first before he even tries to have a baby. I don't think he should have even gotten married yet. I, it's just too much. Um, my so back to Michael and Megan. Michael and Megan meet up with her friend B, and you know, when from the moment that they sit down at that table, B is on Michael's ass, and I'm like, yes, B. Like when I when I if you watch my, well no, I didn't do a review on that. I did on um, I just did like a little quick mini review on Instagram about the love and hip hop. Um, Hollywood reunion because I didn't watch the Love and Hip Hop season, the Love and Hip Hop Hollywood season. But anyways, the relationship between Paris and Zell is like the kind of like a low key relationship that Megan, Megan and Megan and B have a low key relationship like Paris and Zell have like best friend goals like for life. Give me a friend like Zell or give me a friend like B. Yes, I'm here for it. Um, so. He basically, you know, Michael becomes defensive about everything, you know, and B is just basically not here for Michael's BS and he's giving him the third degree and I'm I'm here for him. I'm like, yes, friend, get in that ass because that's what Michael needs. Like, Michael needs somebody that's going to get on him and he's like, he don't have to prove to no, nothing to nobody but Megan, but bruh. Who you think Megan going to when you breaking her heart, when you cheating on her, when she find out you pregnant, I mean, when she finds out you're, you're married and then y'all supposed to be together and you done got your wife pregnant again when you told her that you and your wife wasn't together. So, and I'm just like, whatever, it's too much. So then Megan, um... Like, I just like the way that he just, um, he had Megan's back 100%. So, Megan is, Megan is defending Michael. And I'm just like, girl, you so naive. She's saying that Michael's trying to, like, you may think that Michael's trying, but we know the truth, okay? And you know the type of person that Michael is because he's showing you the type of person that he is. That he is, like, he's just... He's a user, and you're naive, and he's still talking to other females. So, baby girl, what you gonna do? Okay? You're young. You're pretty. I want to believe you're book smart, but you don't, you're not really too common sense smart because you still mess with Michael, in my opinion. But you're still sweet. And I just feel like you could do so much better than Michael because Michael is still talking to other females, not just his wife. And I hope you find that out soon. Okay, back to Lacey and Shane. They're moving into a bigger home. And this is when, you know, she starts to talk about him being immature and things like that. Because while they're trying to move, he's drinking instead of helping her. And then he told her that's what the movers are for. And she was like, yeah, but we pay, we're paying them, but they're not maids. And 
they go into this whole thing and she's just like they go into this whole thing and she's just like you know she's tired of it she's tired of paying all the bills he doesn't do anything he he isn't trying to find a job da, da, da. but i'm like but you knew that when you got with him like he's a felon how did you think he was going to get a job you should have known that it was going to be hard for him to get a job why because he's a felon because he's a felon so i i don't feel sorry for her and then she starts to reach out to her ex john and i'm like hold up hold up hold up you chose shame that's what you chose john wanted to be with you but you chose shame so now why are you reaching out to john her excuse was that she got some disturbing texts from john and so she just wants to check on him and make sure that he's okay john is no longer your concern shane is your concern now because that's who you chose to be with she called her friend and her friend basically is not trying to hear nothing that she's saying just like i said her friend told her you chose to be with shane you don't need to worry about John. You need to worry about your husband. And I just feel like when people... And I think she wants John because John was fi John financially helped her. John was more financially responsible than Shane is. But you should have thought about that before you up and marry Shane. Like, I can't. Like, too much. So, Tony, Tony comes home and Angela confronts him. She tells him that they are done and he is not having it. And she told him that she got, that he got to go. She know about all his little holes and everything. And he got to get out of her house. And he's like, he's not going nowhere. So, she called one of his little friends. She was like, oh, I could call one right now. I think the girl name was Brandy. And she was like, hello. And she's like, hello, is this Brandy? She was like, yeah. She's like, you been messing with Tony? And... She was like, yeah. She's like, oh, well, you can have him. And he's going to come over. She's like, okay. She's like, he can come. He's coming over to your house right now. And she's like, okay, he can come. But Tony's not trying to leave. And in the end, what I figured out, the reason why Tony don't want to leave is because Tony, legally, Tony has to be at Angela's house. And he has to be at Angela's house because when he was released on probation, that was the the address that they told him that he had to, that i mean that's the address that he told them that he would be at so i don't think it's a matter of he wants to be with angela i think it's a matter of he don't got nowhere else to go and he has to be there legally or his ass is going back to jail so basically using her like a lot of these dudes, or even females, because in the next episode, they're going to introduce Clint and his wife. And she was the one that was in prison. And they 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 just use people to get what they just use people to get what they want. And that's that. They don't care about you. So, yeah, that was the end of episode one. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And anyone else tells you that they love you. If no one else tells you that they love you, I sure loves you. See you guys in the next video. Bye.